Hey, it's Clay at ClayTrader.com. This will be my top 10 stocks as we head into Friday, July 12th. This will be a technical analysis breakdown. So if you are someone that uses charts within your trading, or maybe you're just interested in learning more about charts and how they can be used as a tool to help make good decisions as a trader, this will be a video for you. And also, if you trade Bitcoin, I'll do a bonus analysis at the end. First off, a few things. Number one, if you would like for me to do an analysis on one of the stocks that you're in or interested in, just comment down below and I'll do my best to get to that in a future video. Second, this candlestick right here will be moving around. That is because as I speak, the market is still open for a few more minutes. And I like to do these videos when the market is still open because sometimes we can capture some really interesting late day price movement. And then finally, I'll be using the 30 minute time frame, meaning each one of these candlesticks here represents 30 minutes worth of time. So stock number one, S-O-U-N did this in yesterday's video and had more of an explosion today. So that's where these annotations are coming from there and there. But first thing I'm gonna do is a little house cleaning, just get rid of that line as it served its purpose for now. And first key update that needs to be done, let me extend this out, is just based on a foundational rule and chart in which states when levels of resistance are broken and closed above, you wanna see them act as support. So change that line to now green. Now, preferably speaking, what would make the chart look the healthiest? Definitely if the price can stay above that level. With that being said, assuming you care about the big picture point of view, but even if the price were to fall below there, not the end of the world, because from the overall standpoint, you have that purple line right there, the 50 period moving average, keyword being moving. So as time goes by, that line is gonna move itself higher and higher and get more and more relevant. So again, assuming you care about the big picture, as long as price stays above that purple line, everything is fine. Now I keep emphasizing big picture because I do understand that if you're some sort of day trader, flipper, scalper, and you bought right there, or maybe you bought the dip right there and your plan was to buy and sell within 20 minutes, well then yeah, from that perspective, the chart's looking pretty bad. But if you do care about the overall standpoint, everything is still perfectly fine. In the very near term, in terms of areas of resistance, the level that stands out to me right here at $5.60. Good high volume break of 560. Of course, there are no guarantees, but I think it makes it pretty plausible that the price can make a run up to those highs right here. But in my opinion, it's all about that level first and whether or not the price can get a good high volume break of it. Next one, KZIA did this one in yesterday's video and another very, very beautiful move here. And once again, a little bit of perspective. Again, you day traders, if you bought right there and your plan was to buy and sell within 20 minutes, well then yeah, the chart's looking pretty bad for you. But um, overall, even with a pullback, the lowest it got was right here. Previous low from yesterday was right there. Previous low before that was down there. And if you envision each of those as stair steps, these stair steps are making progress in the upwards direction. And from an overarching standpoint, that's what it's all about. Is the price making progress? And you can see here very clearly, it is indeed making progress. So ideally moving forward, what make this chart look the absolute healthiest and strongest? That would be if the price can stay up there above the 95 cent mark. But again, as I just talked about, watch that purple line there. And as that line moves higher and higher, as long as the price can stay above there, then overall the chart is still perfectly in the bull's favor. In terms of levels of resistance, new key level in the near term going to be right there at that level of $1.25. And as I just discussed on the previous one also, if the price can come up there and get a high volume break of that level, uh, then it seems very reasonable that the price could you know make another attempt at those highs, if not even go higher. But all in all, very nice move here for KZIA. Next one, LCID did this one previously and now updates can be done as this thing continues to grind higher and higher. Just going to get rid of that level. First update, just or uh, excuse me, this level right here has already been, um, you know, cleared above at 340. So uh, that'll be a key level to watch in the near term in terms of supports. So if the price can stay above there and just bounce around, uh, that would be a very, very impressive chart. But as you can see here from the purple line, this thing has been just putting in high or new high, new high, new high, new, new high, new high. You get the idea, new high, and then the low is the exact opposite thing, higher lows. So you have a beautiful uptrend there. So that's the overall context is nice, solid, bullish uptrend. In terms of next potential battlegrounds, I'm gonna go to the four hour time frame, and each one of these candlesticks now represents four hours instead of 30 minutes. And this is for a good reason, because as you can see here, even on this time frame, it's hard to see, because we're having to go back multiple months to figure out where these next levels of resistance are, because it's been a, that long since the price has been up around this area. But next key area, right up there around $3.56 will be that next key level. And that's coming from all the way back here in late February. So like I said, Definitely a long time since the price has been up here, uh, but you can see here has turned itself around very beautifully. Let's go back to the 30 minute time frame and you can see this thing continues to grind higher and higher. So at the end of the day, as long as this thing keeps on putting those higher lows, that is by far what matters most. Next one, TSLL. And finally, this one acted human after just, as you can see here, I mean, just new high, new high, new high. And then after today, big pullback here. So definitely some new levels need to be updated here with the next potential area of support. So if you like to play pullback bounces, 
then in my mind, it's a question of can the price go down there, close that little gap right there. But also in closing that, that's a, whoops, you can't even see. Let me get, move this out. There we go. But even if it were to, uh, you know, close that gap, that's also kind of a double whammy of support because it's a previous area of resistance too. And when levels of resistance are broken, they do tend to act as support. So 1240 in my mind, very, very interesting level for those of you that like to play pullbacks. If you more so like to play, you know, the breakouts, then the key area, if there's going to be any sort of potential reversal back to the upside and start to regain some of that momentum right there at about $13.75. And even if the price breaks below there, or excuse me, above there, you're still going to want to keep a very close eye on the purple line there, the 50 period moving average, uh, but one hurdle at a time. And the first key hurdle is just whether or not the price can get back above 1375. But yeah, no doubt about it. Deep pullback today. Is this thing headed down to 1240? And if it does, will it hold? Definitely some interesting scenarios right now playing out. Next one, ticker symbol QS. And I like this one just because of the simplicity of what you got to think a lot of people are noticing. So I'm not trying to press you. This is not some sort of great skill on my part, but you got to think a lot of people have drawn a line very similar to that. And then a lot of other people have noticed that this thing does have a, an upwards nature to it. So they've line, drawn a line similar to that. Let's change that to green. And then just from a pattern standpoint, to keep it easier to see, we have this area of resistance. We have this area of support. We have the huge explosion right here. And for you golfers, try to make it a little bit more visually appear, appealing. Put the golf hole down here. This would be a bull pennant pattern. Now, just because something's bullish doesn't mean it's for sure going up. But call it a self-fulfilling prophecy. Call it whatever you want. When you have a lot of people watching the same levels and wondering the same thing, if the price were to come up here and break up through there, that break in and of itself could very well create additional buying pressure. So big quality bull pennant pattern here. So if you like bull pennants, you like stocks down below $10, certainly keep an eye on it. Real quick, I want to take a break and personally invite you to get signed up for this free live online class that I'm offering here this evening. So if you've been enjoying what you've seen and you want to learn more about this tool, how it can and should be used to build consistency and manage risk, then definitely get signed up for the free live class. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a link down in the description box you can use to sign up. Or if you're watching right at my website, there's an area on the webpage itself that you can use to sign up. Now, a special note, it is a genuine live event. So maybe you already have something on your schedule this evening, or maybe you're watching this Friday morning and you totally missed it. Go ahead, send me an email, and I'd be happy to send you a link to the recording. Uh, but it is live, so it's first got to happen, and then I'd be happy to send you a link after that. Uh, but if you can make it live, then yeah, definitely get signed up, and I'll see you here in just a few hours. Next one here, TSLA Tesla, and this will mean a little bit more to those of you that watched yesterday's video, but if you did, uh, I called the pullback today, and again, I, I don't say that to brag about myself, I say it to brag about charts, so, and turn into a quick plug, go get signed up for that class, but if you watch yesterday's video, you'll hear me talk about, hey, you know what, rising wedge, looking like a pullback, now, did I think it would be that much of a pullback that quickly? No, I don't know, I wouldn't make that claim, but nonetheless, the, the rising wedge struck again, pullback, and then I also mapped out this area as an area uh, where the price could potentially you know, hit on a pullback. Again, did I think that it would be one candle all the way down there like that? I did not think that, but needless to say, it did pull back and it's down around that area. So let me get rid of the wedge up there and we can focus on more of the near term levels. And really this level has been hit. So I'm going to get rid of there because now we need to figure out where the next potential areas of support are with that next main level, at least in my opinion, and I'm not going to call this a do or die must hold level, but certainly an area that, in, in my opinion, carries with it quite a bit of importance. And that's down there at the $2 or $2, $234 mark. Um, so keep an eye on that if that comes into play. And if that can't quite hold up, then yeah, you could definitely see a, quite a bit more momentum pick up to the downside. And at that point, you know, then it starts to be a question of is the price really going to pull down all the way to the 200 period moving average and test that? We'll have to see what happens. Now, if this thing all of a sudden decides to head back up and make a move in the upwards direction, at a level and then a very narrow term, but you got to think those reversal breakout players got to be thinking they're watching that saying, you know what, Tesla's getting beat up, but I'm looking for any sign at all that strength is back and which begs the question, okay, well, how are you defining the strength is back? And I could see those people defining that as a break of that tread line. So if you like to play those sorts of scenarios where the price comes up here, breaks, and then you think that could, you know, create a jolt back to the upside, uh, certainly keep an eye on that tread line. But all in all, very active day for Tesla. Finally got the pullback, but now it's just a question of making sure that the pullback doesn't turn into a full-blown reversal. Next one here, NEXI, and very ugly looking chart right now, but for you longer time viewers, you know what I'm going to say next. There can be opportunity ugly, and that opportunity comes based on the fact that you have a couple of key moving averages, essentially valued at one another. So it really just becomes a question of, and again, no guarantees, so risk management matters, but certainly plausible to think, I don't know, does the price come down here, finally go sideways, and then a move back upwards? That is a, a, a potential realistic scenario. But you also have to acknowledge that 
was this just some sort of you know kind of pump and dump one day wonder where you got the move and now this is the dump and if that's the case well then that's why stop losses that's why risk management matters but to be totally fair maybe this thing just needs a pullback and all of a sudden everybody's going to hop out and then all of a sudden that's when it starts to snap back in the upwards direction so or maybe you don't even like these setups at all you're like no i like to buy good looking charts i don't like to try to find the opportunity and the ugly and fair enough on that point too but i'm trying to bring a couple different scenarios for everybody uh, but yeah if you are one of those people that like to find the opportunity and the ugly uh, this one certainly fits the bill Next one, NIO, and the one thing after today, we definitely have a very well-established area of resistance, so I'm just going to bring that down because after the past few days, uh, it's revealed itself pretty well here. Right around $4.78, give or take a couple pennies, but over the past couple days, you can see right there, rejected the price, rejected, rejected, rejected. You get the idea. So moving forward, if there is going to be any sort of upward momentum uh, accomplished and established once again, then that's going to be public enemy number one there at 478. In terms of areas of support, even with a pullback today, you still have quite a few levels of key support and solid support. You have the number one level right there, that 50 period moving average. Even if that were to fail, you have the 200 period down there, which as you can see here, has a good solid track record of providing support. Again, that's not to say that it'll for sure provide support again, uh, but you would not be considered irrational to think that, yeah, that could provide support given the track record that it's you know already had right there. But yeah, preferably speaking, it stays above that perp line, curls back upwards and gets through there. Uh, but if you do like, like to play more so pullbacks and both these moving averages present uh, very interesting pullback potential opportunities. Next one here, LCFY and good solid pattern here once again. So I'm gonna go through this relatively quickly since I've already talked about this pattern once before. So change that to green to represent support. Get the resistance in play right there. And then keep it one color. So we have our resistance, we have our support. We have the big upwards move right here golf hole down here we have ourselves another bull pennant pattern so i've already talked about the bull pennant and you know even if it's just a self-filling prophecy that makes the price go upwards who cares the price is going upwards that's what ultimately means at the uh, matters at the end of the day so if you like stocks around this price range you like the bull pennants definitely keep an eye on it next one tqqq absolute bloodbath on this one today big pullback just shattered down below that perp line there all the way down. So I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of those levels up there as they serve their purpose for now. But the two main areas of support that I see headed into tomorrow. And the first level, nothing fancy. Just a question of, okay, well, where did the bleeding finally stop today? And that was down there at about 78.65. So keep an eye on that. But if the price does return back down there and push through there, once again, no guarantees. But I think it's very plausible, very likely that the price, bare minimum, goes down and retests that 200 period moving average. So I think that's a very valid price target in the event there's a high volume break of that initial area of support right here, but that would require this thing to roll back over. But uh, that, that seems relatively possible because in the very near term right now, I'm crudely drawing this, there's essentially a bear pennant pattern. So the opposite of a bull pennant. So keep an eye on that level. Now, if the price all of a sudden says, Clay, you're crazy, it's time to bounce. Fair enough. Well, first key level to watch from a resistance standpoint on any sort of bounce right there at $80.70. And then it's been the case with some of these other ones. You're going to want to watch out purple line right there. The 50 period moving average currently valid at 82.25. But yeah, no doubt about it. Big, nasty pullback. Now it's just a question of making sure this pullback doesn't spin into a full-blown reversal. And the first sign that maybe just maybe it is into a full-blown reversal would be the price going down to that pink line and then falling below there. But to be fair, the price isn't anywhere close to there. But nonetheless, still want to get those levels mapped out. I'll get to Bitcoin here in just a second, but again, for you stock traders out there, if you like what you saw here and you want to learn more, definitely get signed up for the free live class. It'll be this evening, Thursday, July 11th at 7 p.m. Eastern time, and it is a genuine live event, and I say that because there will be a Q&A, so bring your questions, and I'd be happy to answer them for you live, but also, if you can't make it for whatever reason, go ahead and send me an email to clay at claytrader.com, and I'd be happy to send you a link to the replay. Now, let's talk some Bitcoin. One quick clarification here. We are now on the four hour time frame. So each of these represents four hours. Uh, that's good. Bitcoin is open 24 seven. So I'd, uh, I'd, I want this analysis to remain relevant for as long as possible. And the four hour allows me to accomplish that. And I'm having a total case of deja vu because literally yesterday when I talked about this, it was the same exact thing. The price had broken up through the top part of the channel. But by the time I got around to doing it about 24 hours later, the price was back inside of it. So second fake breakout in a row. Right there, acted like it wanted to break out, back inside it went. And then over the past 24 hours, acted like it wanted to break out, back inside it went. Now, the good news here is the price is at least maintaining this area of the chart as a support. So it's definitely chipping away and trying to build a higher base. But 
nonetheless, a very, very tricky breakout point here. So I'm just going to assume that you're watching this video 15, 20 hours from now. So question number one you need to ask yourself is, once again, where is the price at relative to 58400 when you're watching this? If you're saying the price is back above there, that's good because that means a breakout is underway. But as history has taught us, I want to get too excited because, well, we've already had two of those fake breakouts. But nonetheless, if you are answering the question whenever you're watching this video that the price of Bitcoin is above 58400 that at least means a breakout has occurred. If you're answering the question that the price is below there, not the end of the world. The, the massive bearish situation would be somehow if you're saying, well, actually, Clay, the price is down below 53000 500. If the price is down below there, that means that this little area of support has been shattered and the price has come all the way down there and broken through there. Now, I doubt you'll be answering it that way, uh, but nonetheless, that is a very important level because that would be the bottom part of this channel. But really, in all actuality, if you're answering the question that the price is above there, but it's down below there, at that point, you would just say, well, concurrent consolidation, which is what's been going on. But no doubt about it, past 48 hours, a couple of nasty, nasty fake breakouts. And as I invited the stock traders, I'm inviting you as a Bitcoin and crypto trader to definitely go get signed up for this free live class because what you learn about can and should be used within the world of crypto and Bitcoin. So like I said, it'll be this evening, Thursday, July 11th at 7 p.m. Eastern time and bring your questions for that live Q&A. And then if you can't make it live for whatever reason, clay at claytrader.com and I'd be happy to send you a link to the replay. But if you can make it live, definitely get signed up and I'll see you here in just a few hours. Get as far as these top 10 videos are concerned, if you enjoy these, hit the like button, leave a comment below. Again, if you have a request, please leave that down below. I'll do my best to get to it. But that uh, any sort of likes and hitting that um, or leaving a uh, comment really helps out the video. So I appreciate it. Thank you in advance. Go get signed up for that free class and hopefully I'll be seeing you here in just a few hours.